Hey guys, and welcome back to Cultural Kaleidoscope, the show where we talk global. What's affecting us, who's behind that, and what can we do about it? You can find out all this and more every Monday. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kobe Mdionyema, but you can call me Kobe. Um, I'm a newly graduate, I'm a Nigerian American, and I'm based in Seattle. I've got so much tea for you guys today, so let's just jump right into it. This week I've got a community outlook for you guys. And our topic is going to be gun violence. Gun violence is definitely a global problem. Over 250,000 people die from civilian gunfire worldwide every year, and only six countries suffer from 60% of the world's gun deaths. The U.S. gun industry directly supplies a vast number of gun crimes um, as a result of recklessness and internet misconduct by companies that consciously choose to sacrifice public health and safety. Um, the U.S.'s weak laws enable this misconduct, a weakness that's perpetuated by the NRA, National Rifle Association because it benefits them to have weak gun laws so that they can have sales mostly everywhere. However, we shouldn't be discouraged because organizations like Amnesty International, a grassroots nonprofit, is constantly working to um, strengthen the regulations on firearm sale, transfer, use, and possession. Sounds amazing, right? We'll talk about that in a second, but first, you hear that? <laughs> you know what that means. That's today's Kino Kama moment. And our infamous Kino Kama stars of the day are the U.S. government, specifically the Federal Bureau of Investigation. On average, the U.S. police kill more than 1,000 people a year. After Michael Brown, um, an innocent African-American man, was killed in 2014, a Washington Post investigation, which means a news like article investigation, Washington Post, not even the FBI investigation, a Washington Post investigation found that fatal police shootings were being underdocumented by more than half. In 2021, only one-third of the of departments um, statewide or nationwide were reporting fatal shootings um, and appeared in the FBI, FBI database. This is because local departments um, aren't required to report both shootings. This undercounting of police shootings in public health databases is a result of coding failures by coroners, medical, medical examiners, and other public health officials, many who, quote, work for or are embedded with the police department, end quote. So basically, this is just confirming what we already knew, the people who are associated with certain police departments help them cover up different things, and it might not be because they, it might not be because they want to, because maybe they're forced to or coerced to, either way, they're still associating with crime and being an accomplice to injustice. So, um, I believe the FBI should already be investigating these things and they should be holding these people accountable, the medical professionals and the police departments. So, um, the fact that this misconduct is being reported on by like different, you know, stations and different things, news article places, means the FBI is fully aware and complicit um, in this injustice. So, the U.S., with all of their um, patriotism, is directly and indirectly influencing other nations. This can be seen in um, the inability to enforce safe business practices. And this can also be seen in the um, 2018 France Yellow Vest protest when the France, France police used tear gas and rubber bullets. And it can also be seen in October um, 2020 in the Nigerian SARS security um, protests. People were protesting SARS in 2020 in Nigeria and they opened fire with real bullets on protesters, um, killing um, 12 people. who were pro They were just protesting police brutality. So that's a bit ridiculous, I think. So if you're still uncertain that gun violence is uh, the biggest problem in the U.S., you might find this fact interesting or even be surprised to hear it. So from 2013 to 2020, seven years, right, U.S. police have killed 8,767 people compared to Canada's 254 people. So basically, Canada, um, in, a, in a span of seven years, only had 35 people killed a year by police officers. That's not great, but that's compared to America's 1,253 a year compared to 254. That's still quite a lot. That's still a big jump, a year. So, yeah. The U.S. definitely has like perpetuated the gun violence problem, and I think definitely influenced other countries to take the same kind of stance with their people um, and have this kind of brutality view to government and enforcing laws. So yeah, America has definitely influenced people the wrong way. Um, but I can't certainly say that I'm surprised. Um, I'm definitely disgusted and slightly shocked, but I'm not surprised because 
when every other week there's more killings in the news and certain politicians would rather focus on banning books and conspiracy theories about what someone's eating or where someone's golfing it's clear and evident um, that people's lives are not the main focus and some people um, just feel like some people don't deserve justice so they're not worried about all the injustice going on in America because it's quite a lot of it so while researching I found that the FBI what they say that they're meant to do the FBI they're supposed to uphold the rules of law keep the country safe and protect civil rights of all Americans they definitely don't do that it's been decades the police have been killing people inadequately and underreporting. If it's being underreported, there must be something going on. And it's so many deaths that have been underreported. Why is it taking so long for people who are supposed to men meant to be investigating this and protecting civil rights to actually do something about it? Because it's not just people of color being killed by police. It's even Americans as well. Like Americans, anyone who lives in America is affected uh, at a higher rate than anybody else experienced gun violence in the world. It's not as bad in different states. Or, I'm sorry, co countries and continents. Um, so they're basically the FBI is implicit in this misconduct and does nothing to resolve it. And for decades, Americans and minorities in America have been disproportionately affected by the FBI's neglect. The people at the top of the chain in the FBI, I found, were the Attorney General and the Director of Intelligence. Not specifically the current ones, because they just came into office recently with Biden, but the ones that have been here for the last three years, three to four years under Trump, definitely accelerated America into a sense of darkness, I think. Um, they said that the challenge with amending gun policies and making substantial changes is that they need to preserve the essence of the Second Amendment and that's what's stopping them from ensuring that safety is the main priority and reducing incidents of gun violence. Here I'm going to show a picture of the former um, directors of intelligence that's James B. Comrie, Adam McCabe, and Christopher Rye and also the um, old Attorney Generals Jeff Sessions and William Calhoun Parr. Um, so those are the old ones and it's kind of their fault that things have been bad for a long time. They were the ones who were at the top of the FBI when pl Trump was planning his coup or on Twitter and no one was doing anything about it. When he's calling people thugs here and there and during the protests he's allowing people to drive across state lines and take justice into their own hands by attacking protesters. This was under Trump's reign and this was under those um, officers' reign as well and they did nothing about any of the injustice going on at any time. So that's a bit disappointing at all. And then here are the new ones that we need to convince to make lasting change. So the Director of Intelligence now is Av um, Avril Haynes and the Attorney General is Merrick B. Garland. And so they're at the top of the FBI. If anyone's going to um, take accounting for all the police shootings, or not even just police shootings, all the school shootings, there's been so much going on that is unjust. The FBI has tra has supposed to have been tracking all these years, and they haven't really been doing anything, so that's a bit disappointing. So those are our infamous keynote karma slides of the day. Um, I'm leaving FBI contact information in the description, so hopefully you can kind of just contact them, maybe make them aware of this video, share this video so people will know who's actually behind all the injustices that have happened because yeah at the end of the day the president's at the top of it but there are different systems that are supposed to be helping and calling people out and for a long time they haven't called anyone out they purposely wanted to be unaware like less than one third of police shootings reported when there's two thousand something a year does that make sense one third is being reported and then they're aware that only a third is being reported and they're not curious about the rest of the fatal shootings that are then deemed suicides or something else and it's usually suicides and there were so many things in 2020 that I saw that were deemed suicides that were just so embarrassing because how are lynchings, how can something be, that's a lynching be a suicide? It's really terrible to think of but how would anybody do everything, the things that, the, that people are saying that they did to themselves and then in the end finish it off by going on top of a tree? How is it possible that someone did that by themselves? So it's a bit disgusting um, to see what the police department can get away with, but also what the FBI will let them get away with, and how nobody wants to check the government. We've created checks and balances that don't work because we don't want to enforce them, and that's really sickening to me. But anyway, let's move on because now it's time for our bold brilliance moment, 
and our bold brilliant stars of the day are the hard workers at Amnesty International. Amnesty International is a global movement with over 10 million members, um, including me now, and um, activists worldwide. Amnesty International is a grassroots nonprofit focused on getting the world to a place where everyone can enjoy the um, human rights enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And I'll put that right here so that everyone can read that. Um, they uncover the truths and hold human rights viol violators to account. The Safe Community Act that they just helped pass recently, it raises $250 million a year to fund community-based anti-gun violence programs. Um, and in states where these, over these programs have been um, applied, have already seen a 50% reduction in homicide rates. So people have already been having to be more accountable in these states that where these things have already been implemented. And so I think that um, we should help them get to their goal and help support them in their um, next fight because what MC is doing now is they're currently talking to Congress to increase this yearly fund to five billion so these programs can be implemented nationwide and these are programs that once they're implemented in your state I'm not sure exactly the details but they're forcing um, police officers to be more accountable which is lowering the homicide rate by 50 percent in places can you imagine if it was in every state hopefully we'd be more like Canada and have only 34 p killings a year instead of the above 1,000 number that we have every year now. So yeah, there are both billion stars of the day. I'll leave some information about them here and also in my description below. And you can check them out and support them if you can. That would be amazing. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Um, I just wanted to remind you guys don't forget to go out there and act. Um, but before you go, I want to let you know that voting for the Supreme Superhead um, competition has officially opened today. Um, I'm excited. I'm going to share my link with you guys once again in the description. And so you can share it with other sneakerheads. And then maybe if you have a second, go on there and um, submit your vote for me. I'd really appreciate that. Right now, I'm third in my um, group. And I need to stay in the top, like, five. Because there's going to be cuttings in a few weeks. And then from there, another round and another round. And eventually, if I get through all the rounds, I'll be the new Supreme Sneakerhead. So I would love your guys' support. And my information will be in the description. Um... Voting only takes a second, so please check it out if you can. And the last thing is I'm making a last minute Halloween costume, so tune in the next episode to see what I come up with. I'll have a picture of um, my next outfit here um, next week, even if it's embarrassing or not, I'll let you guys see what I come up with. So until next week, remember to read your brand books, and you can make history too, and to always Kobe you. Love you guys, and have a great day.